Howdy folks, thank you for tuning in and as always I'll start by saying if it's the first time watching our channel or you're a regular viewer don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the more people that subscribe and like the, our YouTube channel the more it encourages me to keep coming up with fresh content. So today we're having a look at a, a vintage lens, it's from the early 80s, mid 80s I believe and by all means if I, if I get anything wrong or you want to add your own comments please feel free to mention in, in the comment section below. And um, so this is the Vivitar 75 to 300 mm macro f4.5 to f5.6. It only weighs around 730 grams and but despite that it feels nice and solid. A nice sunshade there that helps keep the dust out as well and and any, any side light and it's metal uh, it's fully fully built in the zoom and the focus are, are all one which is very very easy and smooth to use which is also a bad thing which I'll come on to in a short while so you've got on the mic and Z you've got 4.5 round to f32 and these are in full stop increments there's no half stop and it's got a little a for, for auto should you have a, a compatible camera and to engage that there's a little button there, silver button there under my finger there, you, you press that and you, you can move then beyond F32 to A for for the auto setting. So the zoom, oops, bit of reflection there, let's just move it around like that, that's better. It shows a little red line there, I'm not sure if that's depth of field or not, but by all means in the comments if, if you know what that is, by all that means let me know. Because I have seen some lenses that do show a full depth of field scale, field scale there, which is colour coded. The close focus is, let's just check, around about 1.5 metres. And uh, there, there is a macro setting, but but uh, I haven't as yet taken any photographs with that. And talking of photographs, if you click on the link below you'll be able to see some sample images that I've taken with this lens and even wide open at f4.5 as you'll see in the images yes it is a little bit soft but it's usable so if you're out in low light conditions and, and you're okay you can use a fast ISO and you're okay like holding it handheld at like 60 to 80th of a second no problem in low light obviously you need to master the art of manual focusing. I haven't taken any macro photographs with it yet but if I do I shall uh, update in the in the link in the description below where you can see all the sample images which I've, I've taken a range at f4.5 and a range at f8 so you can see the difference and at f8 the results are quite astonishing really for such an old lens I'm very very impressed. So. I was talking about how smooth the zoom focus mechanism is, but let's say, and this, well, I'm going to demonstrate it works in both directions. And so, well, I'll, I'll just show you. So what you that we have here, I've set it at 300 millimeters, and I'm going to let go. There, falls down. And so, if that is you walking round and it's hanging hanging from your neck and you've got it set on 75 millimeters and it's the lens is pointing down to the ground very quickly it's going to default to 300 millimeters every time so be, be aware of that um, when if you want to frame something very quickly and you, you normally have it on 75 millimeter get, to get it in the center and then zoom in it's always going to slip down to 300 millimeters now whether that is just this particular model I don't know, or if they're all like that, uh, by all means, in the comments below, you're more than welcome to let us know how you've got on with this lens, and if you have that same same issue where it moves too freely, which um, you, f you find with some older lenses, they actually go the o opposite way, and they get more stiff w with use. So with this one, it's uh, got obvious signs of use there. Um, you can't quite maybe see in the image, but there is some internal dust, and some quite large debris as well but as the images in the link below 
by, by, all, by, uh, by all means have a look uh, at the end of this video you'll see it makes no difference whatsoever to, to the quality and the, these are multi-coated optics and it's uh, six aperture blades and according to the constructions book which I did get with it there are 14 elements in 10 groups and, and multi-coated and uh, I will probably in the description below, well I certainly will, I'll, I'll write down, I'll type down all the specifications from the booklet so you can check yourself. So overall I'm very impressed, impressed with this lens for, for something from, from the 80s, very well built, very compact for a 300mm with a, with a 58mm filter thread. So you're not going to be spending silly money on, on a, a filter. This is a Pentax K. I have got the adapter which I've not got fitted at the moment for my EOS camera which is a crop frame, cropped uh, frame, uh, set, cropped sensor, get it right, camera. And so instead of a 75 to 300 it is in effect around about 105 <clears throat> to 420 millimeters. So it's very very nice lens. What would I say it's suitable for? Well as you'll see in the images below in the description, the, the link that I provided perfect for still life, wildlife. Uh, if, if they're on the move then you might have a few issues with, with the focus unless you, you've mastered the technique of following fast moving animals with a manual focus lens. And also as, as seen in the um, images which I'll link to below you can see that it's very very suitable for landscape photography as well. And Landscape does not have to be a wide angle lens, you can get some fantastic landscapes with the medium telephotos like this. So that, that's it, that's a very quick look at the Vivitar 75 to 300mm f4.5 f5.6 macro lens. I'll leave some more information about it in the description below, plus the all important link so you can see some photographs that I took with this lens myself. Uh, on, on the first weekend of using it. I'll, I'll probably get some better results further down the line but I just wanted it to be a, a set of photographs fr from my first use with, with it to show how easy it is to use this camera, this lens. Uh, I think you can pick, pick them up very cheaply on the usual auction site or Facebook marketplace for what 10-20 pound if, if you're lucky and uh, if you do see one at that price I would say snap it up if it's in, in good working order. So as always, thank you very much for watching and please check out the link in the description below.